discretion is advised. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're out here in the air gun bunker and today we're going to be reviewing the Diana XR200. This is a gun that I've had for just over a month. I've done a lot of shooting with it. I have used it out in the field and I'm very familiar with what I like and what I don't like with this gun. And so I'm gonna pass that info on to you guys. We'll go over some of the stats, some of the performance, and I'll just share with you guys my own experience in using this for over a month. One of the main reasons we get out in the field with these products is to test them under real field conditions. And that allows us to really see what can go wrong, what we like, what we don't like. And these are all things that you simply cannot find from a bench. The XR200 does come with a hard case, which is nice for when we travel out in the field. It's able to protect the gun and it is large enough to where we can mount a scope um, as well as have some room for some extra accessories. The overall length of this rifle is 43 and a half inches and it comes in at just over six pounds. This is probably one of the first air guns that I've reviewed that is completely ambidextrous. You can switch just about everything from left to right, um, the side lever, the safety, as well as the front pressure gauge. And so that's kind of a bonus for any left-handed shooters. Um, this will probably work really well for you. Now this stock in OD green is pretty nice. It feels pretty burly. It doesn't have that hollow feel to it. And it does have a rubberized texture on the forend and grip area, as well as having a adjustable cheek weld. Out front, just underneath the forend of the rifle is five and a quarter inches of composite Picatinny rail. So you're able to mount a bipod. It does have plenty of room, so you're able to kind of move that forward and back. And you could probably even add a sling stud on here if you wanted to do so. Out front of the rifle is your pressure gauge here, and this is a 280cc air reservoir, and it fills to 200 bar, just under 3,000 PSI. And this air gauge here is able to be moved from left to right, and so you can degas the gun, and if you're a right or a left-handed shooter, whatever you preferred, um, you can move this gauge. Um, so that's kind of an interesting feature that I've not seen before. Diana thankfully did include a foster fitting rather than going with a fill probe, which you guys know that I hate. Um, very simplistic way to fill this gun up to 2,900 PSI. Um, and it does have a dust cap here, which I wish they would have kind of made a little larger and I wish they would have added some knurling on there because it does have a tendency to want to slip out of your fingers um, out in the field while you're filling the gun. My first 20 minutes of actually getting this gun was kind of frustrating and partially due to the fact I could not get it to hold air. The gun would not stay cocked. It had some issue with the trigger sear not engaging with the hammer and so you'd go to pull the side lever back and it just would not stay engaged and uh, I tried to fill it, air was coming out the barrel. Ultimately, I had to plug the barrel to get air in it to seat the poppet. And so once I got it to seat, it's held air, I've had no leaks, anything like that. Uh, but it was kind of frustrating to have to deal with that right out of the box. And I kind of think of, you know, the typical end user that might not be experienced enough to kind of solve that issue. Thankfully, this gun does come with a very extensive user's manual that pretty much shows you how to dismantle every component on this gun, where everything goes. So it is nice to have that, but it was kind of frustrating. And then once I got air in it, I got the gun to cock. Um, I got it to feel to where it was safe to, to use, the safety and everything worked. I went ahead to load the 12 shot rotary magazine here and it broke. Um, the spring broke and uh, there's just no way of using the magazine. And so I contacted Diana through email. I disclosed to them the problems that I had. They seemed kind of surprised. They said that this gun had been test fired um, with three magazines before it left the factory. Whether or not that's true, I couldn't tell you. Maybe something happened during shipping, but it didn't appear to have any damage to the box. 
and certainly no damage to the gun. And so these magazines are complete garbage. Um, they're not something that I can trust. They did send me two replacements, which were equally as bad quality. Um, you know, you can see the little plastic ball indent here. It really doesn't even catch. They don't have a good fit and finish to them. The spring inside, I don't think is strong enough. And it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when they're gonna break. And uh, it's just not something that I can rely on out in the field and so I ultimately was just using this single shot loader here which works really well. I'll kind of show you guys how that works and one problem that I found in using this out in the field away from the bench. Off to the left side of the rifle is your power adjustment. This is essentially a transfer port adjustment that's going to allow the air to be restricted. If you're going to turn this clockwise, it's going to lower the power of the gun. It's going to close that hole so you're getting less airflow down the barrel. Opening it all the way up is counterclockwise. Now when I got this gun, it was fairly loud and so I went ahead and just tried to turn it down and the few times that I've made an adjustment here, you can already see there's some knurling on that screw. I think this was a poor design. I think they should have gone with a little knob here that you can turn with your finger. I think that would have been probably a, a better route and certainly a lot easier because the more you adjust this, um, that screw head is just going to get chewed up because it is quite difficult to turn. And the other thing I noticed is it makes really little amount of adjustment to the power levels of the gun. If you want to degas the gun, that's right here. You just loosen that up and that's going to empty this air reservoir, um, which you'd want to do anytime you do any maintenance or adjustments to the gun. The XR200 is a side lever design and it can be configured to either the left or right side of the rifle. Um, it is very easy to cock, it seems to be pretty smooth, um, and you can decock the gun. Now one thing that I noticed when I was out in the field hunting is the fact that this opens so easy and on numerous occasions I'd be hiking and I'd notice that this had fallen open. And so that's definitely an issue if you're going after rabbits, squirrels, um, any kind of animal where you got to shoulder the gun fairly quickly and take a shot. This just opens way too easy. It's almost floppy. And so that's one thing I would have liked to have seen them improve is just how this latch is shut. It needs to be a little more secure. So this gun did come with a single loader and I really kind of like this design, it's kind of neat. I can see how it would work really well for bench shooting, but it's not the best option um, for hiking around in the field. But I really had no choice because um, I did not have a functioning magazine. Um, how this works is you can load two pellets into this and it's just gonna slide into the breech here. Um, you can load the first one, take your shot, cock the gun and push it over and that's going to load the second one and that works fine you know as long as you're on a, a table or a flat surface but as soon as you start trying to carry the gun around um, that second pellet is just going to fall out and so I kind of noticed that um, within the first few minutes of using this gun out in the field um, but other than that you know I really do like um, this tray, I like, I, I think it's a kind of a neat feature um, for bench shooting. As far as the overall weight and the ergonomics of this gun, it is very good. It shoulders well, it's easy to carry. I did carry this over two days um, through some pretty rugged terrain and found no issues with getting fatigued. I do like the fact that it has a 
a rail on the bottom so I can mount a bipod. I think that's definitely a bonus and it definitely came in handy um, for a lot of the varmint hunting that we did out in the field. Just behind the breech is this plastic cover and it kind of has a little bit of movement, a little bit of play in it. I would have liked to have seen um, the fit and finish a little better on that. And to be honest with you, I would have liked to have seen it actually metal, especially in the back where you've got your hammer spring. And there is going to be a lot of tension there caused by, you know, drawing the side lever back and putting force on that spring. And then on top of that, you know, you cannot adjust the hammer spring here, which I think would have been an added bonus to this gun, making it just a little bit more adjustable to the end user. The XR200 is outfitted with an Alturos regulator that is set to 130 bar. As far as performance goes, the Diana shot extremely well. I was pretty surprised. And I used a variety of different pellets that I tested here at my 25 yard range. Now I tested anything from the Crossman Premier hollow points all the way up to the 25 grain redesigns. And this gun shoots within spec. They claim just around 33 foot pounds in 22 caliber. And I found that this gun shot within that. And I settled in on the 15 grain GSD Hades that have proven to work really well in hunting situations and they seem to be really accurate at 25 yards. And so I used those and they were shooting at just over 900 feet per second, putting out just about 27 foot pounds over 24 shots on the reg. And so I'm impressed with the performance of this gun. It is extremely accurate, and I think that's partially due to having a good regulator and a good barrel. I did go ahead and test the sound levels on this gun with and without a moderator. Now without the moderator, this gun is pretty loud. It's not what I'd call backyard friendly. We did use a decibel meter, which is not in any way a scientific device but it does give us a good baseline to what we can expect as far as a backyard friendly gun. Now typically a quiet gun is gonna be between 60 up to just about 80 decibels and anything over that is what I call loud and probably not a good choice for backyard use without a moderator. To add a moderator under this gun is gonna require you to remove the shroud and how you do that is you loosen up the barrel pin here and the shroud is just going to slide off. And on the front here you're going to see an air stripper and what you're going to do is just unscrew that. Now this gun did not come with the adapter for the moderator. Um, they went ahead and sent that with the extra magazines that I got. And this adapter just screws on over the end of the barrel. While we got this off, I'll, I'll show you guys kind of a closer look at this barrel. The Diana is outfitted with a 21.6 inch Lothar Walther barrel that I found shoots really well with a variety of different pellets. I've tried a lot of different kinds and they all seem to shoot extremely well out of this gun. This gun does have a five inch air stripper and it is plastic construction. It's got some holes on the side here. Whether or not that does much of anything to the performance, I couldn't really say um, without doing any further testing. Um, but I can say that it definitely doesn't seem to quiet the gun, um, if any. And so this adapter just goes over in place of that. And once you get that on, um, you're going to go ahead and slide the shroud back over this. Make sure everything is kind of centered and you'll tighten up the barrel band. This is not exactly, you know, in my opinion, a very good way of having to get a moderator on here. You know, why they didn't just add that to begin with um, is really kind of beyond me. And then you do have a uh, cap here that's going to go over the threading um, to protect it and what I've been using on most of my guns is the zero decibel this is the shorter version 
seems to fit the gun pretty well and, and these uh, work pretty well to, to quiet the gun. They do have longer ones um, that would probably be even more effective, but I tend to always like to go with the shorter ones um, just to keep the length of the rifle down as short as possible. I really hope I was able to share with you guys in good detail all the positives and negatives of this rifle so you guys are able to make an informed decision of whether or not this is right for you. With that being said, I could care less if you guys buy it. I have no stake in this company. I'm simply showing you guys my own experience. After showing you guys everything about this gun, it does have a pretty big elephant in the living room and that is the price point. These retail for just under a thousand dollars. And to be honest with you guys, I got this gun, I pulled it out of the box, took it out of the case, looked at it and I was thinking maybe three, $400 price point and so I was a bit shocked to hear that they were going to retail for you know under a thousand bucks especially considering you know all the problems that I had with it in the beginning which I showed you guys so let me know in the comments if you guys think I'm being too critical on that but I really do have to look at everything as a whole and I really just don't think that this gun meets that price point if you guys have any questions I haven't answered, you guys can email me at my website, mountainsportairguns.com. Fill out the contact form and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. I really appreciate you guys watching and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.